All right, guys, you only get the one view today. Just the one. Uh, somebody asked me what my shift range is when I'm riding the bike. And I wanted to talk about that for a second, but let me stop here real quick because I see something. I see something, and when I see something, I have to stop because I see something. <laughs> so, let me pull in here real quick. $4,000 for this truck. It's an 88 Ford half ton. I mean, it's a four wheel drive. But honestly, the prices have come down because I've been looking at trucks and the prices have been coming down. I can get a pretty decent truck now for about $2,000. So that's a little much considering it's got a busted windshield and it's got a lot of rust on it. So somebody asked me what my shifting pattern is on this bike, and I gotta tell you, um, it took me a couple of days of actually looking at the speedometer when I shift <laughs> to figure it out, because I generally just go by the RPMs. So I shift at about 18 or 20 miles an hour from first to second. And then at 30 to 35 to go from 2nd to 3rd. And then usually 40 to 45 to go from 3rd to 4th. And if I'm just cruising at 45, because that's the majority of the speed limits around town here are 45. But downtown here on these surface streets, it's like 35, 30, 35. So I'll stay in 3rd gear. And if I get, you know, if I'm at a cruising speed of 45, you know, like this street right here, State Street, the speed limit is 40 and 45, I'll stay in fourth gear. Because you're still not wrapping it out as high as you are if you're doing 70 on the interstate in fifth gear. You're still not wrapping the bike that high. Staying in fourth gear at below... 50 miles an hour is fine. You're using some RPMs, but the bike, the bike, in my opinion, gets its best fuel efficiency. And at 45 in fourth gear, you still have enough oomph to throttle up and get around somebody if you need to without having to downshift. So I generally go between 18 and 20 for first first to second and between 30 and 35 for second and third and if all I'm going to be doing is 35 or 40 I'll just keep it in third now if I get between 40 and 45 I'll go into fourth and then depending on the situation if I'm on a highway and the cruising speed is 55 then once I hit 55 I'll go into fifth but if I'm getting up on the interstate, then, uh, you know, I'm coming up an on-ramp getting on the interstate, then I shift at a lot higher RPMs than I do when I'm riding around town. So I'll still shift between first and second at like 20 miles an hour, but then between second and third will be more like 35 to 40. Between third and fourth will be between... Uh, 45 and 50 and then between 4th and 5th will be between 60 and 65. So it depends on the situation as to how I shift the bike. Like right now, speed limit's 30 miles an hour. I'm in third gear. I'm not going any higher than that. It's senseless to lug the bike that much. And I am currently getting, I am averaging between uh, surface streets and, and highways because I do both all the time I'm averaging about 51 miles to the gallon now I would imagine that if I was just doing all surface streets I might even get more fuel mileage than that but because I'm doing both I'm going surface streets and interstates and highways 
I'm averaging about 51 miles to the gallon, which I'm pretty impressed with, considering that the fuel mileage on this bike absolutely sucked ass when I bought it. But like I said in several videos, I had a mechanic friend that told me that everything, every vehicle manufactured is set for the best fuel efficiency at sea level. Every one, including motorcycles. So when it's fuel injected, it's got a computer and stuff. It takes a little while for the computer to learn your elevation and the oxygen levels in the air so that it can start burning with the best fuel efficiency. It takes a while. It took about 1,800 miles on this bike to get to that point. But once I started hitting that, you know, I was getting 35 miles to the gallon when I bought the bike. But then I went from, see, I just went into fourth gear and it lugs too much. I'm only doing 35. So, and going up this hill, I've still got plenty of power to continue if I need to. If I was in fourth gear, I would have had to have downshift or just lug real bad or whatever. I don't like that. I've been riding bikes for 38 years and I've never lugged a bike. But I've had a plethora of people on this channel telling me to lug the bike. You need to lug the bike to get your best fuel mileage. Well, I don't lug my bike. And I'm getting 51 miles to the gallon now. I don't lug it down. I use the RPMs that were given me. Not a through street. Well, that's just fucking great. Not a through street. Guess we gotta go this way, even though it's the wrong way. So there I'm in third gear, and I'm doing 33 miles an hour, 34. And it's not wrapping out, guys. I'm not wrapping the bike out. I can tell by listening to the RPMs if the bike is wrapping out or not. This is not wrapping out. We're probably in the mid RPM range, which is fine. It's not going to hurt your bike to be in the mid RPM range. Now this, is still not wrapped up at 45 miles an hour. That's still not wrapping as high as it does on the interstate at 70. So, and that's third gear. And no, I did not change my sprockets or anything. This bike is fully stocked mechanically. I mean, other than putting the windshield riser on there and handlebar risers and different mirrors and a skid plate and different pegs, this bike is stock. I have not done anything to it mechanically. So yeah, it'll get up to, you know, 45 or 50 in third gear if I need it to. And I think a lot of times we ride two ways. People ride two different ways. They either want to hit the rev limiter every time they shift, which in my opinion is insane. You don't need to hit the rev limiter every time you shift your bike. Or they want to shift really early and lug it way down. And that is insane as well. But if you can hit that mid RPM range, and shift and you can ride in the mid rpm range all the time then you're not going to have nearly as many problems with getting around traffic if you need to and getting on the interstate and things like that or even just cruising around town So there's 40, and I just went into fourth gear. The speed limit's 40. I'll end up doing like 42 or 45. 
but that again still leaves me enough power to get around something if I need to without wrapping out the bike completely. So you know I didn't expect this video to be about <laughs> all about shifting and RPM range and all that stuff. I was just kind of there's the Flying J again. I should go in there one of these days and see about getting some windshield chips. The problem with that is they got to be owner operators. If they're not owner operators, they just don't give a shit. Company drivers don't care. They figure out, hell, if the windshield cracks, they'll replace it. So they don't want to pay for anything. And they don't want to take the time to call their company and say, hey, boss, I got a guy here that can fix this windshield chip. You want it done? They don't, want to, they don't want to do that. They don't want to take time out of their day to do anything to benefit the company. I mean, God forbid you should do something that might actually improve your standing in the company. They don't want to do that either. I'm just out here to drive my 11. That's all. That's what a lot of them tell me. So I've been to the truck stops several times. I didn't record it, but I've been there. Not this one, but I've been to several others. And usually, you approach a company driver and you say, Hey, uh, let me fix that windshield chip for you. You want to get a hold of your company and see if they'll pay for it or whatever. Dude, I'm just out here to drive my 11. That's it. I ain't out here to worry about the damn windshields and flat tires. That's a company supposed to take care of that shit. Well, all right then. Glad to know you're a team player. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I don't know if you've noticed it in other videos of mine, but I don't love the bike. I do on accident sometimes. I'll lug the bike down on accident. Pure accident. Like right now, I've got a ways to go to get to the next light and there's no hills in front of me. I'll go ahead and shift from third to fourth because now I'm running at the lower part of the RPM range. But I'm on a flat surface. I'm just... And I'm speeding. And I'm doing almost 40. But... It just depends on the situation as to whether I'm running at the mid RPM range or the higher RPM range or staying in the lower RPM range. Like right now at 40, a little bit of power to get ahead of somebody, but if I was in third gear at 40, see that? You got much more get up and go. So. It's all up to you what you want to do, but I personally like to have that get and go if I need it. I don't want to be stuck in a situation where I have to get on the throttle and I have to worry about downshifting and trying to get on the throttle and all that shit. I just want to be able to get on the throttle if I need to. Alright, that's enough bullshitting today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. Maybe you'll call me an idiot, maybe you'll call me a saint. Either way, I don't really give a shit. <laughs> Throw me a comment, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share the video. You know what to do. And I will see you in my next video.